Hey, this is Notzer, and I just wanted to talk about the commander skills in 0.5.3. The public test server is up, and I am able to see it. Can't get past a tier 6 ship, unfortunately, unless I want to grind out on this particular server, and I don't really want to do that. So I'm just going to talk about the actual stats we see in-game, whether I would use the skill, and after that, I'm going to go into the brand new Africa map. So first of all, expert loader buffed to 50% faster reload. Still garbage because it requires all main battery guns to be loaded in order to take advantage of this. If they weren't loaded, someone could just swap back and forth and have 50% faster reload. I wish there was something in the game that prevented that. But I don't think there is, so we're never going to get the loader system that we want. Unfortunate, but you know, what can you do? Basic firing training. It now only works on 139mm guns, but it also covers all secondary guns. So the Yamato's 155mm, you're completely fine, don't worry. You can still benefit from this, it's still useful for AA. We need to see aircraft carriers to be able to justify AA skills, but there you go. Everything else is the same. I would probably never use extra loader. I would use basic firing training for gunboats, for AA builds, if there is a significant amount of aircraft carriers in the future. Expert marksman. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Expert marksman was nerfed. And I don't think this was in any developer notes. It now only helps 139 millimeters and below for the 2.5 degrees per second traverse speed. All the light cruisers, the Mogami, the Cleveland, the Nuremberg, the Königsberg, the Kutuzov, they're all only going to get 0.7 degrees per second and that's a huge nerf especially to the Megami who has 51 seconds on the 155 let's try that again 155 millimeter guns this only gets it down to like 45 maybe 41 whereas in the live version you get it all the way down to 30 seconds so it's it's usable in live who cares right it's just like any other caliber gun. Well, we care now, and they haven't compensated, so... This is a huge nerf. I don't know how I feel about this. I understand that some of these light cruisers are strong, but I did not think they were that strong. I think they felt better, but I didn't think they performed that much better than everything else to justify such a huge nerf. Torpedo armament, they only buffed it for torpedo bombers. Sorry, American aircraft carriers. Yeah, they take that away and they give it right back to the Japanese. So the Japanese, of course, woohoo, this is fantastic for you. You have faster torpedo rearm, you'll be able to attack faster. But for everyone else, didn't change at all. Still basically required for Japanese destroyers. And that's about it. Everything else is the same, except for Last Stand is now at level 2 instead of level 4. It's mandatory. It's awesome for destroyers, even cruisers. I think it's. I think you're going to see it on a lot of cruisers. Battleships, very rarely do you get your engine or steering knocked out, but I could see it on a battleship too. It's just really convenient to not have to use damage control. You can use it for fires and floods rather than having propulsion or steering knocked out. Torpedo acceleration. You're only going to use this on Japanese destroyers, high-tier Japanese destroyers, and high-tier American destroyers. You could get by at the Kagito, maybe the Fubuki, whereas you would have to wait until the Fletcher. The upgraded torpedoes on the Fletcher or the gearing to really make use of this for the American. I would never use this on a ship 
where it would turn a stealth torpedo attack into a detected torpedo attack. There's no advantage there. And I don't know if this increases the torpedo's detectability, so it's easier to see, give them a little bit more reaction time, or if it's just straight up, it's a better torpedo, and the player is expected to maneuver accordingly. They also changed Vigilance, they buffed it a little bit. This makes it just slightly better with the module, Target Acquisition, and Vigilance than how the patch was in 0.5.1. So, uh, I don't know. I feel like this is a very expensive skill for a very tiny part of the game. Usually how I play, if there's a threat of torpedoes, I go in with backup or I die. That's how the game works. So, superintendent's still better. Still first, first pick for superintendent. Even torpedo acceleration. I would not take this until I've worked through a very, very, very skilled commander and I come back and maybe I would take this in a late tier US and Japanese destroyer. Advanced firing training, also nerfed, but secondary battery still benefits. So Yamato 155, you can still take advantage of it. I'm very interested to see the secondary battery build, although I don't think it's going to be that good. <laughs> it's far too close. Six, seven kilometers. For the Yamato, it's, what, 12 kilometers? You can easily destroy an enemy outright at those ranges with battleships. So, I would prefer a more boring build where you increase your health, you increase your ability to mitigate damage, your traverse speed of your torpedoes, more consumables. You're going to see more success than going that secondary build. But AA and gunboats will take advanced firing training. The Soviet and US destroyers. Survivability expert. Now this is a wild card because I think it's mandatory for destroyers and cruisers. It's just so good. It's useful in all scenarios, fighting all types of enemies. 2,000 at tier five, 4,000 at tier 10. Now you might say 4,000 is not a lot. That could be one shot. That could be five seconds, 10 seconds. That could be the difference between winning and losing. And it will be helpful in all scenarios. So it's, it's really strong. And of course, manual fire control for AA. This is really good if aircraft actually matter. I did a quick check. Every single ship has a caliber that exceeds 85 millimeters at least. So Battleship has 120. The destroyer's main guns double as AA. And these do a lot of damage, and I believe efficiency is damage per second. So you're just making yourself much, much stronger against the enemy. Your large caliber have the greatest range. It's a win-win if aircraft carriers are relevant. If they're not, I don't think this will be a relevant skill. I do like that it requires the player to actually have skill to use it. It's not just on by default. So hopefully this and the secondary will have a lot of extra damage potential because the player has to juggle everything around them and set aircraft or ship targets with their cursor. So I like stuff like that that benefits the player. Last chance. This was buff two. I think it's just too too situational. How often are you stuck under 10% life and having the chance to benefit from the reload time? Even if the reload time was 100% to the reload time, I don't think it would be something you would take. It's just such a tiny sliver that you could last that long. It's just too situational. 
manual fire control for secondary. This will re also require pressing control, taking your cursor, selecting the target. One through six, you only have a 15% benefit on the dispersion of your guns, whereas at seven to 10, it's 60%. So that's pretty cool. We'll have to see because guess what? They don't list the dispersion for secondaries. <laughs> I know it's high. I know it's high. You can just see all of the miss opportunities for guns. And when you see like a really close battle where you were using your secondaries constantly with the enemy, maybe 5% make contact with the enemy. It's really bad. So I would love to see the actual stats and not ask the player to go outside the game to realize if the skill is worth it or not. That's my opinion. I would not take this on anything other than battleships, if that. Preventative maintenance, 50% versus 34%. This is pretty big. Now, I don't, I don't know exactly how it works. I believe when a module takes damage, it fully absorbs it from the ship itself. So the longer it takes, to incapacitate a module, the more damage you could potentially absorb if they were firing through your modules. I think that's how it works. If that's exactly how it works, this is great for a battleship because there's so many modules on the ship. The ability to absorb a little bit more damage, very useful. And if it's cruisers and destroyers, you know, I would not take this over concealment <laughs> because concealment is just straight up awesome. You can get in closer, destroy enemy destroyers, completely ambush targets and disappear. It's great. The final skill that changed, jack of all trades. Minus 15 versus minus 10%. I still think it's garbage because most consumables are charge based it doesn't make it better that you can have access to it a little bit sooner because if it's a heal i'm waiting on a really efficient heal if it's defensive fire i'm waiting for the aircraft to come over into a situation where they're threatening me or an ally damage control will benefit 100 percent from this but it's 5% more than high alert. High alert only costs three skills. You can't justify a five skill in a scenario where you're only gonna benefit from one of the skills. Getting aircraft out faster, I just don't see why you would take this over concealment, over extra skills over here. I just don't see it. I think Jack of all trades needs to be better. And I don't think they want to make it that better. So yeah, this is the skills. Very quick. I'm trying to get it quick. <laughs> you don't you have no idea. It's taken me 20, 30, 40 minutes to get through these prior and finally I'm just like, okay, quick, dirty. Alright, we are on the map Tears of the Desert. This is the brand new Africa map that was just released with the 0.5.3 public test server. I tried to go back and do live commentary. Oh, uh oh, we don't want you playing on this map. So I don't know what happened. It was probably three to six hour difference, but I can no longer try this map out. First impression, it's New Dawn. It has a wide open B with islands covering it. A and C are somewhat wide open, but there are islands that you can take advantage of to engage the enemy from safety or ambush if you're a destroyer, you dirty, dirty destroyers. So I've looked around the map. I wish I could share every moment of that, but in general, you have a lot of tall islands, a couple small islands. There's a few locations, F7 to be specific, 
where there's an island that juts out a little bit, provides perfect torpedo coverage, maybe even blocks line of sight, but you can fire from that location. So there's a lot of intricacies with each little island that needs to be inspected in a full combat scenario. I'm sorry, I can't get that for you. So let's just theorize a little bit. Destroyers, they're gonna head from their spawn northwest, southeast, they're gonna go for B. They're gonna break through the first island. They're gonna get into B. They might be scouted. They'll have to pop their smoke. They'll have to rush away. Aircraft carriers could scout them. I don't think any battleship or cruiser should even attempt to go anywhere near the middle of the map until a significant portion of the enemy is defeated. I bet you it's gonna be A, B, B, C scenario. If that's the case, I think BC has the advantage. There is a lot of island coverage. And just looking at it, I'm going to bet that the Southeast probably tries to do BC by default. They have a nice island chain that basically goes from B all the way up to C. Destroyers could possibly use C as coverage. That island does jut out just enough where you can capture and hide from the enemy ever so slightly. If you're seeing A from my point of view right now, you'll notice that the islands are pretty short. There's not a lot of cover. There is enough cover that you could possibly hide a battleship behind one of them, but not too much. You can't use it actively as you're capturing A. B is just going to be a slugfest, though. I expect constant barrages from both sides, and it's glorious. I love New Dawn. I want a high-tier New Dawn. I miss it so much. I'm excited if they put it in. We need a high-tier fault line, too, in my opinion. So, that's 0.5.3, the new map, and the commander skills. There are two big changes. I'm a little disappointed with all of the nerfs that are going towards light cruisers there is no compensation these cruisers are just going to be straight worse than they are right now we also need to see gun dispersion information if you expect us to take a skill that modifies that i can't believe it's not available i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you have a fantastic day and i'll catch you next time